Hi, I'm Robert Petkoff, and I've been asked by Josh Walden to answer three questions uh, for the Walden School of Musical Theatre. So, here we go. Uh, training is, is taking the, the raw talent that you have, and I think we all have talent. We wouldn't be doing this if we had no talent. You take that raw talent you have, and through training, you learn techniques and exercises that take that raw talent and make it a professional skill. You know, when you've done a Broadway show for a year, when you've done anything for a long time in acting, it can start to be work in order to get yourself to the place where you need to tell the story the way you need to tell the story. The feeling we have in a rehearsal room the first time we discover something and and the room explodes with excitement because you've made a connection to the other actor maybe maybe you've done something funny in the room exposed with laughter or you and the other your scene partner and the director get very excited because you've come up with something that works really well that's true uh, true and honest and and really tells the story in a beautiful way there's a feeling you get when you come up with that that's thrilling. You don't have that feeling every single time you do it. That's just not the way it works. And so, especially when you do a long run, you need a series of techniques that help maintain your ability to tell the story to the audience in a way that they believe you, but whether or not you are truly feeling it at the, at the time that you're performing it. So, training to me is learning those techniques, breathing techniques, uh, 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 vocal techniques, dancing, movement, uh, script analysis, all the things that you need in order to become a better version of the actor you want to be. Um, I, I think that, that pretty much sums it up. I think about Olympic athletes. You know, you may be a fast person, but there's no way you're going to the Olympics if you don't train, if you don't learn a set of skills and exercises that can help you run faster and consistently run faster, that can help you focus because so many athletes will tell you that yes, they have the ability to hit a ball or throw a ball far or, or jump over a, a high jump, but the focus to do it, to do it consistently, is something that's really important. And training, I think almost more than anything, helps us to focus uh, when we're on stage or when we're in front of a camera uh, or in a concert, anything like that. Focus is so important. Uh, and, and you can learn techniques uh, through training that will help you do that. Um, it's, it's harder for me because I think one of the great things about training when you do it a lot and when you learn the techniques very well, they become ingrained in you. They become instinctive. So that rather than thinking, I need to open my diaphragm and breathe down to here, whatever it is, those things just start happening automatically. Uh, I think if, if anyone out there plays a musical instrument, if you think back to when you first started playing an instrument to now, you know, you'd think, where is the E? Where is the G on this keyboard or on this guitar or this violin? And there comes a point at which you no longer ask that question. It becomes a part of who you are. Same thing happens with acting techniques and singing techniques uh, and dancing techniques. They become a part of you. So I don't know that I, that I consciously on stage say, oh, I'm going to now use this technique to make this work. But I do know that there's one thing that I do in, in every situation to help me focus, to help me get back into a scene if I lose it, and that's breathing. The, the most simple, it, it sounds so simple. You know, we all, we all breathe or we die, but when we get on stage, when we start to perform, when we're in front of people, tension, anxiety, nerves can all make us breathe in a weird way or hold our breath. And the, the thing you'll learn as you go through this career uh, is that the emotional truth of what's at your core always comes out through breath you're always connected to the emotional truth through breath. So when I find myself in a long run of a Broadway show and I'm singing a song for the 300th time, I may not emotionally have that connection to it, but if I find myself breathing, relaxing, 
and finding my connection to that through breath, I can always find some emotional truth there. It may not be the grand emotional truth I came up with the first time, but it's true enough that it will tell the story. And it won't be me trying to manufacture, trying to smash up my face to look like I'm unhappy. It will be a genuine, true expression of what's happening in the moment. And so I do know there are times where I've been on stage listening uh, to a long monologue, say, and, and thinking that my, my focus might be straying. And so I stop and I tell myself, just breathe. Just take a nice deep breath in, breathe out slow, and listen to what's being said. And the more you do that, the more you have an emotional connection to what's being said. You become a better scene partner that way, and you become a better actor. So breathing is the one technique that I think, if, if, it, if I'm conscious of anything, it's the one that I go back to and say, just, you're holding your breath, breathe. And you'll find nine times out of 10, that really sees you through almost everything. That's hard. Uh, you know, with the experience I've had, there's a trillion things I would like to say, but I'll, I'll try to distill it down to um, two things, two major things. Uh, the first is just in terms of general knowledge, just in terms of what you bring to the party as a performer. Practice, read, devour everything. The more you know, the more well-rounded a human being you are, the better you can pretend to be different human beings on stage. The more you'll bring a creativity and imaginative imagination that others don't have. The, that uh, the, you are the sole owner of your imagination. And the more input you have, the more experience you have, the more you've read, the more you've listened to music, the more you've danced, the more you've done any of those things, that's one more tool that you get to put in your toolbox so when you read that script and you come across a character, you think, oh, I know that. I know what that means in the script, or I know something that that character can know. I have a secret I can take into the audition with me that only I know, or that I know because I read that thing. Whatever it is, the more you know, the more you can bring as an actor to the table. And so I just think, devour everything, like I said, and keep practicing. You never need to ask permission to sing. You know, we feel as actors sometimes we need to ask permission, please let me be in your show so I can act. But the truth is, in your own home, no one's stopping you from singing. No one's stopping you from reading a play out loud. No one's stopping you from looking at a monologue and working on that. And the more you work on these things, the more you practice your skills, the more they become a part of you and the more they, they become something that you pull up instinctively instead of thinking about it and saying, what do I do here? That's in incredibly helpful to you. And the second part is auditioning. Uh, I worked with Brian Cranston in a play, and he gave me the, the best advice I ever had about auditions. And that was, uh, he said, for years he would always ask himself after he left the room, you know, gosh, I, I, I probably should have done it like this. Maybe they were looking for that. Or when he was preparing to go in the room, looking at the script, I wonder what they want. Are they looking for someone who's uh, angrier, uh, someone who's funnier, someone who's shorter, taller? What do they want? And, of course, every casting uh, call comes with a, uh, a line or two about what they think the character is going to be. But what Brian said was, once he got to the point where he realized my job is to look at a page or look at a song and decide what is the most creative, imaginative, exciting, passionate thing I can bring to this, that only I can bring to this. What do I think this character is? And then I go into the room and I present that to the director, the producers, the creative team, and then my job is done. I walk out of the room and I'm done. I don't have to think, did they want this? Did they, did they, uh, would they have preferred this? What is that guy going to do? What is this girl going to do? Irrelevant. Your job was simply to focus on creating the most interesting character or singing the most interesting version of that song or dancing the dance in the most interesting way you could do and only you can do. And then your job is done and it frees you from the anxiety that can build up after audition and after audition, because there are going to be a lot of auditions you don't get. And you'll start to say, oh, I'm not doing it right. 
um, I, may, I should try to figure out what they want. Nonsense. What's most exciting is when you walk in the room and you say to the room full of people, not literally, but through your actions and your character choices, hey, I got this. I'm here. I've got an idea for this character. I'd love you to see it. Then they can decide, oh, that actually works really well for us. Or, okay, that's not what we're looking for. But your job is not to decide what the character uh, should be in the scope of the entire production. Your job is to decide what do you think the character is going to be and how will I present the most interesting version of that in the room. That's exciting because then you're not questioning. And I don't mean to say you can't have questions when they walk in the room and they say, have you got any questions? If there's something you don't understand in the script or if there's something you're not sure of, of course you say, oh yeah, I, I was curious, is this character his sister? Because I only had the sides, I don't have the whole script. Those things are, are absolutely there. But what you want to try to perfect is the ability to use your imagination and use all the techniques you've learned to come up with a really interesting choice for that character. Because they're going to see a lot of people. And, and I guarantee you, they're going to hear songs over and over that they've heard thousands of times before. And the only thing that makes it interesting is what you do with it, as opposed to what someone else did with it. So, that's my advice. Devour everything and know that when you are going to audition, only you can do what you can do. No one else. So come up with the best version of what you can do and let that be enough. I hope that helps.